Brakathaya Hawa, Brakathaya Hawa Shai, Brakathaya Hawa, Brakathaya Hawa Shai, Brakathaya Hawa, Brakathaya Hawa Shai. Blessed be the true, holy, powerful, mighty name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. And blessed be the true, holy, powerful, mighty name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, our Lord and our Savior. The Thamash Nakabala, as a Kumi Shah Sharalaga, the Bahanas, the elders of Israel, being the apostles, and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Shalom, Wahab, Labach, Yashar, Sharala, which is peace and love to the elect of Israel. Come back at y'all again with another lesson, Baharach HaKorash, Shah Amaf. <clears throat> in the Holy Spirit of Truth, and um, the topic of this video, the title of this lesson is going to be something along the lines of, I'm scared, so that's why I can't lead the truth, all right, which is a, a quote from, you know, a, a brother that said he was following the apostles for some years, and um, he was uh, out there at the camp this past weekend. Um, so I'm gonna just play the clip and then you know we're gonna hop into the spirit and you know let let the spirit flow. Also to humble us, because that's what it does. It, it humbles you so you, you don't get too proud, you don't get too big headed. And that's one of the reasons why guys fall off. You know, they get too like like you can watch Nate, it's like he no one can tell him anything. You know, nobody can't tell him nothing. He sits on his chair, and, you know. The beginning the beginning of wisdom is to fear the Lord. Right. Yeah. Right. I'm scared, so I can't leave this yeah, truth. Right, right. right. yeah. well, <laughs> Serve the Lord. Why these guys are not scared? They're not scared. Serve the Lord with fear and trembling. That, that's what the scriptures say. That means, oh, uh, the scriptures say, a, a broken and, and a contrite heart I will not despise. When you look up that word contrite, it means humble. I'm scared, so I can't leave this truth. Okay? Because if you leave this truth, it's over with for you, man. Let's start off with the book of Hebrews 10. Hebrews chapter 10. And verse 35, it says, Cast not away therefore your confidence, which have great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience. That after ye have done the will of Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. If any man draw back, if any man leaves the truth, the Lord has no pleasure in that man. Okay? Let's go into that word pleasure. Yo dokeo, yo dokeo. It seems good to one to do willingly, to be to be ready, to prefer, choose. To be pleased with, take pleasure in, to be favorably inclined towards one. So the Lord's not pleased with you. He's very displeased with you. Right? To think well of. So the Lord don't think well of you. The creator of all things, he don't think well of you. Right? So it says Hebrews chapter 10 in verse 38. Now, now the just shall live by faith. The just, the righteous is going to live by faith. They called us faith based Israelites as an insult. Calling us faith based Israelites is a sign of the, is a characteristic of the just is the characteristic of the righteous. Now, the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back onto perdition. You draw back, you draw them back onto perdition. You draw them back onto destruction. But of them that believe to the saving of the soul, we must hold fast. We must, what did they say? Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which have great recompense or reward. And that reward starts with the saving of our soul because destruction is coming. And if you draw back, you're going to get caught up in this destruction. Every man, woman that fell back from this truth, Okay, 
They're going to be destroyed. No ands, ifs, or buts about it. They already bogged out. Majority of these people that left the truth that came across this word, all right, and they and they left from serving the Lord, you know, the men they left from serving the Lord, or the women that left men that serving Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, them motherfuckers is bogged out. Trust me. Trust and believe. Okay? It says uh, that they're cursed to the direst woes. Let them be love. Damn, how does it go? It actually has a nothing, uh huh. Salakia. There's a scripture, it says, man, I can't quote it. If you don't have the love of Mashiach, let him be. Let's see if we can do it like this. Baba Kusha, Salakia, bear with me as I search for this scripture. There it is. This is, um, I know how to use that blue letter. First Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 22. If any man love not the Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, let him be anathema maranatha. All right, look at it. Look what it says in the NLT. If anyone does not love the Lord, that person is cursed. Our Lord come. They could have did that better. Curse till our Lord come. So until they're going to be they're pretty much they're catching hell. They're cursed. They're going through it. All right. And all, in every aspect, they're bugging out. OK, let's just go into it in the Greek, which is it's a Greek word, right? Let them be anathema. A thing set up or laid to be to be it's laid by in order to be kept. Specifically, an offering resulting from a vow which being consecrated. Nope. Right here, it says a thing devoted to Yahweh without hope of being redeemed. And if an animal to be slain, therefore a person or thing doomed to destruction. They're not going to be redeemed. They're doomed to destruction. They're cursed. Devoted to the direst of woes. Okay, I I usually just go straight to that, you know, straight that's straight to the point. Excommunicated, excommunicado, excommunicado is no bueno. All right, that means you gotta you gotta you're a mark. Okay, you're a mark. And when them evil angels get loose, they gonna come after you. It says. A wicked man seeketh, a man that seeketh only rebellion. Uh, Proverbs 17, 11, An evil man seeketh only rebellion. Rebellion is back to war with the Lord. It says that, um, uh, rebel, can't quote it. Um, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. First Samuel 15 and 23 for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. The scriptures say suffer not a witch to live and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. All right. Stubbornness. Cause you putting yourself a motherfucker that's stubborn. Okay. They putting they self before the Lord. They putting themselves for everything. That's idolatry. Right? Because thou has rejected the word of the Lord, he also has rejected thee from being king. Now, this is specifically talking to Saul, but the, hey, uh, in the book of Hosea, 
My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And because you have rejected knowledge, I'll reject you from being a king and a priest unto me. And I'll reject you and your children. Hosea 4 and 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou has rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy power. Yeah, you try to live this. You just, there's niggas, they come into the truth. They in, they in the camp, around the camp for a year, two years, three years, 10 years, 15 years. And then they just go back into the world and act like nothing happened. For just forgot, just forget everything that they learned. Right? Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy power, I will also forget thy children. So when all hell breaks out loose, they gonna be they're not gonna be protected. This is the book of Sirach 2 and 13. It says, I'm gonna start at verse 12. Woe be to fearful hearts and faint hands in the sinner that goes to that go of two ways. Woe unto him that is faint hearted, for he believeth not. Therefore shall he not be defended. You're not going to be defended. You don't believe, right? You don't love Yahweh Shai Mashiach, which to love him is to follow him, is to obey him, is to keep his commandments, is to do what he said. He said, if you love me, feed my sheep. So if at one point you are feeding the sheep and then you turn from feeding the sheep, you will not be loved. You will not be defended. You are cursed to the direst of woes till the Lord comes. Woe unto you that have lost patience. It's taking too long for you. Right? You putting a time limit on the Lord. If the Lord don't come by such and such date, I'm out of here. I didn't sign up for this. Woe unto you. All right? Woe unto you that have lost patience. And what will ye do when the Lord shall visit you? When the Lord comes, what, what, what can you do? What can you do but get punished? What can you do but burn? Okay? You will be defenseless. When the day of the Lord cometh. I'm not trying to be defenseless. When the Lord pours his wrath. I'm not trying to be unprotected. Okay? When, when famine comes. Or the movie just came out. Leave the world behind. Niggas is going back into the world. Niggas went back into the world. Going back into that Hebrews. He, the Hebrew. Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Niggas draw back and went and went back to the world. You drew you you went back to go be with some bitch and then the bitch left you. You gave up salvation for a Babylonian bitch. You gave up salvation for a job. For a damn job. Captivity, slavery. For some bullshit. Right? Um, damn, what's that scripture? St. Peter. Second Peter chapter 2 and 24. If after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, we escape, arise. It says in the book of Micah 2 and 10, arise and depart. This is not your rest. For it is polluted and it will destroy you with the sword of destruction. We escape this polluted world through the knowledge of Yahweh Shai Mashiach. If you put the knowledge of Yahweh Shai Mashiach to the side, you go back to those pollutions. Therefore, you will be destroyed with this with, with this polluted world. Right? They are entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Cur Anathema Maranatha. Curse to the direst woes till the Lord comes. You worse than you was before you. You was already bad when you came. You was already through before you came into the truth. But now you're super through. Okay? Yo ass super duper califragic espialidocious through. Okay? It's scriptures talk about when the um when the spirit 
Let's just finish this first and we'll get that next. Second Peter 2 and 20, it says, For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai Mashiach, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than at the than the beginning. So you were worst. Look at man. Some of these and the Lord be bringing out examples. Look at um grumpy knuckles. Also known as element. Also known as um, I'm a Sh Shaba Allah. All right. The former head of Dallas. OK. He was, man, that guy was sharp. He'll, I always use this because I remember the video. He he went into the string. Some Edomite dude went and came up and asked about the string theory. He, man, he took the string theory and wrapped it around the dude's neck. Like, who the fuck knows about a damn string theory? The point is, he was he was a sharp individual. Very sharp individual, but he was being uh, unbrotherly. Um, he couldn't take rebuke, okay? He was being stubborn, right? He was being rebellious, high-minded. This is, you know, just from uh, what I've heard from, you know, the elders in Dallas. Um, and now look at the end result. He's worse than he's ever been. He, he has a YouTube called Grumpy Knuckles. Got dreads. He has a very, very dark countenance. And that's just one of many different examples, man. All right. Different examples in Chicago. Them dudes, they leave the camp and they just be bugged out. Lineups, dreads, smoking blunts. And that's just the beginning of it. That's just the start. All right. The, there is, man, niggas that left this truth. Niggas get turned out. Dealing with uh, dudes in women clothing. I don't want no parts of that, man. Sc scripture says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. It might be in that same. This is Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 26. It says. For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Now you have no you have no cloak. Now you have no covering. Now you're not going to be defended. Now you're not going to be protected. Right? But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fear, fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. Golly, that's that's definitely fearful. Let's read in the NOT. There is only the terrible expectation of God's judgment and the raging fire that will consume his enemies. You, you're going to get smoked. You're going to get smoked. And before you get smoked, you're going to see your, your, your deepest, darkest fears is going to come upon you. Right? He that despiseth Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye... Uh, this is uh, a lot of people like to say yeah, the, the God of the Old Testament was vengeful and the God of the New Testament. He's he's a nice God. I remember when I was first coming into the truth, I was still in high school and we were going over. Um, I can't remember what class it might have been English class. And we was going over different literature at the time. It was going into the Epic of Gilgamesh. And uh, there was also a segment of the prodigal. Of the um uh, the parable of the prodigal son, okay. So we were reading about that, and um this one uh, light skinned nigga, <laughs> light skinned nigga, he was uh I remember him saying, yeah, he was like yeah the the God of the Old Testament he was like a thug, and the the God of the New Testament when, when it came to the New Testament he was he was pretty much he was sweeter he was softer in other in other words but I remember he said the God of the Old Testament he was he was he was a thug that's what that's what he said all right but the the uh, in the book of Malachi the third chapter it says I am the Lord Yahweh I change not therefore you sons of Jacob are not consumed the Lord ain't changed this is we still dealing with Allah Shadia we still we still dealing which which means what um, terrible demon like power. OK, that's how the, uh, that's what the Lord was known as because of the type of vengeance he brought, type of wrath he was bringing 
Okay? This, we still dealing with, he ain't changed. Lord don't change. Lord's not fickle. Okay? This the same God, Yahweh, okay, that destroyed, that, dest that uh, flooded the earth, saving only eight souls. That flooded the earth, saving only eight people, man. This the same power. Okay? And we reading about it here in the New Testament. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. The Old Testament, right? Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who have trodden underfoot the son of Yahweh and have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and have done despite unto the spirit of grace. Wow. Wow. That said, that said. A handful. Okay. Let's read in the NLT to simplify it. Just think how much worse the punishment will be for those who have trampled on the son of God. Yahweh Shai. And have treated the blood of the covenant which made us holy. His blood makes us holy. Not you wearing your fringes on that little ass t-shirt. Okay. With some niggas logo on it. Talking about you uniting in Christ. That's not what make in your combat boots. That's not what make you holy. It said our righteousness as filthy rags. Okay, our righteousness is of the Lord. The bloody hour shy is what makes us holy. Not Christ, not Jesus. Not you could call him whatever you want. It, it, you spitting on his blood. You spitting on his sacrifice. All right. Which made us holy as if it were common or unholy and have insulted and disdained the Holy Spirit who brings Yahweh's mercy to us. Back in the KJV, for we know him that have said, vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, saith the Lord, and again the Lord shall judge his people. So how much more, how much sore punishment, how much worse the punishment is going to be? Under Moses' law, you wasn't, nigga. You got caught doing something, nigga. It's a wrap for you. Stone him. Okay? But how much worse is it going to be? You came into this truth. You came into this knowledge. You tasted of the heavenly gift. This is the book of Hebrews chapter 6. And verse 4, for this impossible for those who were once enlightened... And have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of Yahweh and the powers of the world to come. So like, I'm looking at this squirrel, this squirrel trying to get all close shit, trying to think I'm an Uber or something. But it says, uh, and have tasted the good word of Yahweh. Basham Yahweh Shai and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance. It's impossible. You left. You spit on the Lord's cup. You trodden down. You looked at the Lord's sacrifice, his blood as an unholy thing. Going back into the world to party with some heathens. You drew back to be of the, to be amongst these weirdos. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the son of Yahweh fresh and put him to an open shame. Let's read in the NLT. And who then turn away from Yahweh? It is impossible to bring such people back to repentance by rejecting the son of the Lord. They themselves are nailing him to the cross once again and holding him up to a public shame. Man, Lord ain't going up on that cross for uh, again for nobody else, man. For nobody. For nothing. He already did what he had to do. Okay? Now it's our turn to present our body as a living sacrifice. Okay? That's the point on that. Peter. Second Peter 2 and 20, it says... Um, I'll read 20 again. It says, For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness. Then, after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered onto them. It, it would have been better for you to just stay in the world, stay a nigga, okay? It would have been better for you to just keep doing what you was doing. 
the, 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 these niggas that ain't coming to the truth, the Pookies and the Ray Rays, they, you gonna get jacked up more than them. Cause you know better. Okay? You knew the way of truth. To him, to him that, uh, know if to do good and do if not, to him it is sin. You're going to be beaten with many stripes, right? Than the average nigga. It says, but it is happened. Right. But it is happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again. You like a dog that turned to his own, that's eating up his vomit. A dog, a dog, you throw up, you know, not just a dog, but period, you know, in general. People, animals, whatever, right? You throw up. Why? Because your body's rejecting it because it's toxins. That's why you throw. If you get too drunk, what do you do? You throw up. All right? Because you're intoxicated. You're too, you're overly intoxicated. So that's what we did when we came into this truth. That was that water that sobered us up. And it made us throw up all those toxins. It made us throw up all those pollutions. All right, here it is. Everybody sobering up, drinking this pure water from Jerusalem. And your ass over there fucking uh, um, with a straw trying to slurp up your goddamn um, throw up. Your vomit. That's how that's how these what these niggas is liking on to, man. And the so and the so the pig that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Clean the pig up only for the pig to jump back in, in the shit. Jump. You you a pig that got cleaned up. Now you back in the shit. Back in the mud. Oh, it's like his damn, um. What you call it? Truck. It's pulled up on me. Damn tow truck. Um. Anyways, man. That shit ain't on shit. What the fuck they on? Oh, he coming to tell uh, some other shit. But anyway, Salakia. Salakia. Uh, that was it on that. We was going to get... Matthews 12 and 45. Matthews 12 and verse 43. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. That unclean spirit, all right, uh, it, it left. Why? Because the Holy Spirit came. Okay, that clean spirit came. The knowledge, what it say in the Hebrews, you tasted of the, uh, uh, of the, the knowledge of the world to come, so on and so forth. It says, um, Verse 44, then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept and garnished. So that unclean spirit, he going to keep coming back. He going to keep coming. We done. We dealt. We deal with it. Spirits come and fuck with us. Spirits that we had on us from back then. New spirits. OK, and he'll come back with some new spirits, man. All right, trying to get back in the house. If the Holy Spirit is there, the, he's not gonna get in. If that clean spirit is in, there, is there, you know, the, the, them doors is locked, the windows, everything is is shut. But if he come back and it's empty and nothing's there, that's that Holy Spirit's not there. Verse forty five. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. And we see that take place, man. Seven more. So the nigga becomes more wicked than he was before. But, uh, when he was in the world. Got all type of spirits on him. All type of demons on him. Okay. And some of them guys still stick. Some of them guys still out there. Talking about crazy shit. Saying they got the, the name, the true name of the Lord from the seventh heaven. You're not going to be able to find this anywhere. Well, he was so charged to bring that out. That's a man that got seven more wicked spirits. That's a man whose latter end is worse than the first. I don't want to end up like that. I don't want to end up like, you know, like dude from Mississippi. 
And at one point, he was an elder. You know, uh, I've never met him in person, but I watched a lot of his videos. I learned from a lot of his videos. So to see that take place, that's a fear. That's a that's a scary thing. Okay. Did we already read that? In... Right. Uh, Hebrews 10 and 31. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hand of the living power. The Lord will. But it said, fear not him. Matthew 10 and 28 and fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Fear the Lord. The Lord will bug you out. Give you a plague of your heart, man. Did the script say give me any plague, but the plague, plague, give me any wickedness, but the wickedness of a woman. Give me any plague, but the plague of the heart. Lord will bug you out, man. You lead this truth. You get taken out this truth. You'll be straight bugged the fuck out. You could be talking to yourself, man. Like straight up talking to yourself on, on drugs, hardcore drugs. You could turn into a sodomite. You you just open to the spirits. You you ain't got no you ain't got no wall. You ain't got no walls of defense. You ain't no brazen pillar no more. You ain't no defense city anymore. Look what Job, Job went through what he went through, but he had a defense. There was boundaries that Satan couldn't pass. The Lord said, okay, I'll let you do that, but don't, but don't, you know, don't kill him. All right, at first he said, all right, go ahead and do that. Don't touch his body though, right? Okay, I'll let you touch him, but don't, don't kill him. Satan had boundaries when it came to, when it came to uh, uh, Job. But if, if you leave this truth and you no longer serving Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, them boundaries is up. Look, go ahead, go do what you want to do. Because you cursing the hey, the whole bet with uh, the Lord and Satan What was, look, if I do this, he going to curse you. If I do this to Job, Job's going to curse you. So you, you leaving this truth, that's you cursed. We just read it in that Hebrews. You putting the Lord to an open shame. You count his covenant as, uh, uh, you count his blood uh, as an unholy thing. Okay, so them boundaries gonna be tight. Yeah, go ahead, do whatever you want with that nigga. And Satan's gonna have a ball. Satan and his demons gonna have a ball, and we see it, man. We see it on these people. You could literally, man. You come across one of them fallouts, man. You could see the demon. You could feel the demons on their ass, man. Bouncing off their ass, man. All right. That was it on that. So we are not of them that draw back, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. This is Jeremiah 5 and 22. Fear ye not me, saith the Lord. Will ye not tremble at my presence, which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree that it cannot pass it? And though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet they can they not prevail. Though they roar, yet can they not pass over it. Will you not? Will you not fear the Lord? Will you not tremble at His presence? But when the Lord comes, man, everything's gonna shake. I'm trying to be with Him. I'm trying to be right, right under His wings, right behind Him. Don't want to be in opposition of Mashiach Yahweh Shai. Okay. Um, First Corinthians 9 and 16, for though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of for necessity for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel, woe, death and destruction. If we don't push this word, I don't want death and destruction. I want salvation and deliverance. So what? I need to preach this gospel. It's necessity. It's needful. Come on, you that has to be it. Luke 
Luke chapter 9 and verse 62. And Yahweh Shai said unto him, No man having put his hand. Oh, I spelled plow wrong. That's why. And Yahweh Shai said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. You're not going to make it into the kingdom. That's, that's my most. That's my biggest fear. My biggest fear is not is, is falling short. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. That's not what I wanted. Hebrews 4 and 1. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. Let us therefore fear. All right, like the brother said, oh, I'm, I'm scared of the Lord. I fear Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. I tremble at his presence. I tremble at his word. It says in the book of Isaiah, to this man will I look. He that is poor of a contrite spirit and trembleth at my word. Like the other apostle Gabar quoted Philippians 2 and Psalms 2. It says, uh, work out your own salvation with fear and with trembling. Because we not, it, it's not, um, what, what's the word? We don't know yet. We don't know if we're the elect yet. We don't know for sure, I should say. We don't know for sure if we're the elect yet. All right, anything can happen from now and, and when the Lord comes. That's 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 humbling to even think about, man. The Lord can make any one of us a fallout if that's what his will is. And you can't do shit about it but fall the fuck out. And that's what the apostle was going into being, you know, a can't be high minded, can't be proud. Right. Let us therefore fear, let's say promise being left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So faith is the key ingredient, man, and we got to feed that faith. It says faith is as a grain of a mustard seed. And when that mustard seed, you have to water that mustard seed, though. In order for it to become this big, glorious tree, you have to water it. You have to give it light. You have to give it the proper nutrients. Okay? The scriptures talk about growing in grace. Okay, and never looking back. Remember Lot's wife. Look what happened to that bitch. Okay? So that was pretty much it. Lord willing, that was edifying, uplifting, and exhorting. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachach, Rash. Yahweh is the true, holy, powerful, mighty name of the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, powerful, mighty name of His only begotten Son, our Lord and our Savior. Rachach, Rash is the Holy Spirit that speaks through us, that allows us to rightly divide the word of truth and teach the word correctly and directly. Give double honors to the elders of Israel, being our apostles and the elders of great men. Stone that rule well is Shalom Wahab Labachiar Sharala, which is peace and love to the elect of Israel. Shalom Achim, you best keep on pushing, stay sober, stay diligent, stay faithful, stay prayed up. Salvation draw off nigh, and redemption's near them we believe. Shalom. The beginning, the beginning of wisdom is to fear the Lord. Right. Yeah. Right. I'm scared, so I can't leave this right. truth. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. <laughs> Serve the Lord. Why right. these guys are not scared? Serve the Lord to fear and trumpet. That's what the scripture says.